Hello, my name is Alex Kaufman. And I am currently a member of the Institute's Banking Practice Committee, or the BPC. Hello, my name is Chow Chow. I'm also a member of the Banking Practice Committee, where my role is the Council Liaison Officer. My role is to provide a connection between the BPC and Council, and one of my areas of passion is to ensure that banking as a practice area is being represented in the services that the Institute provides. Today, we'll provide you with a summary of major industry news and how these events may impact our industry. The events of 2018 can be best described as a painful year for the banking industry in Australia. Media reporting has been extensive and community trust in banks has been badly eroded. 2018, in my view, is probably the most important year for the industry since the global financial crisis in 2008. The revelations about the industry in general, its subsidiary life insurance companies, its licensed brokers, products, customer interactions, profit focus, culture, plus the reaction of the regulators are all pretty damning for the industry. It has been anything but a dull year. So Alex, can you tell me more about the Royal Commission into the misconduct in the banking, superannuation and financial services industry? It is still ongoing and due to release its final report by the 1st of February next year. So far, the Commission has received over 10,000 submissions from the public. Commissioner Hain submitted his interim report on the 28th of September, identifying the pursuit of short-term profit at the expense of basic standards of honesty, greed as the fundamental cause for the misconduct identified during the hearings. He has also heavily criticised the lack of appropriate response by ASIC and APRA. The Commission has documented fundamental bank operational and governance failures in mishandling of customer disputes, commission-driven selling and inappropriate behaviour by licensed brokers, charging of fees for no services including ongoing fee collection from deceased individuals, poor board performance, remuneration of banking leaders. The list goes on and on. Already aftermaths from the shock revealed at the hearings have been felt in the industry with resignation of CEOs, senior executives and directors of boards from some of our major financial institutions. Establishment of customer remediation schemes, the escalation and closure of unresolved issues and refunding of fees collected from customers for no service. The financial cost is expected to be significant. I would highly recommend for members to read through a selection of the submissions to the Commission. Those from industry bodies, the regulators, customers and the interim report. They are a useful learning resource to understand the impact that our recommendations and decisions can have on customers. Rather than focusing purely on the financials, the challenge for us is to better understand the values, the drivers, the corporate culture and leadership styles that exist in our industry and to consider how we can change it for the better. Alex, could you talk more about the APRA review into CBA which was released in April? The APRA review into CBA focused on the culture, leadership, governance and oversight of our largest domestic bank. This document also makes compelling reading. The report identified major issues surrounding compliance and conduct risk, such as inadequate oversight and challenge by the board, unclear accountabilities and a lack of ownership of key risk, weaknesses in how issues, incidents and risks were identified, escalated and resolved, the complex and bureaucratic decision-making processes, the slow detection and resolution of risk failings, the weak operational risk management within, with a lack of qualified experience compliance resources, and finally, a remuneration framework that had little sting for senior managers when poor risk or customer outcomes materialised. We can also say that some of these issues are likely to be prevalent in all banks and the recommendations equally applicable. Every CEO of every bank in Australia will have carefully read the report and thought about how it can apply to their bank. Key recommendations from the report of particular interest are more rigorous board and executive committee governance around non-financial risk, the injection into CBA's DA of should we in relation to all dealings with customers, and the need for a change from a reactive and a complacent culture to a culture that empowers, challenges and strives for best practice in risk identification and remediation. 
Thanks, Alex. What about the two APRA paper releases? The first was on the proposed revisions to the capital framework for authorised deposit taking institutions, that is ADIs, which covered all the risk types, credit, operational, interest rate risk on the banking book, trade and market risk and credit valuation adjustments, that is CVAs. The goal of the proposed reforms is to implement the Basel Committee's latest goal in its 2017 view of the capital framework for a better balance between simplicity and risk sensitivity and comparability in the risk-based capital approaches across banks and jurisdictions. Secondly, the Murray Financial Services Inquiry FSI recommendations from July 2017 of establishing unquestionably strong capital ratios for Australian ADIs. The second paper from August deals with the presentation of capital ratios so that the inbuilt conservatism in the determination of banking capital for Australian ADIs will not disadvantage them against their international rivals. No doubt there will be lots more changes to come from the regulators and government in 2019. Looking towards 2019, the crucial unknown is the recommendations that will emerge from the final report that Commissioner Hain will deliver in 2019 and how the current and next government will implement all or any of them. However, we can guess that they will formalise some changes already being implemented by the banks, such as banning of trolling commissions and fees for no services, tighter control and monitoring of financial advisors and brokers and greater board responsibility and oversight. We can also anticipate the finalisation of the revised capital framework by APRA with the rollout of Basel III and the strengthening of capital as banks move towards the goal of unquestionably strong. We can also expect to see banks being hit with class action lawsuits arising from the misconduct revelations arising from the Royal Commission. Some of these will be strongly contested by the banks and actuaries may be called upon to act as expert witnesses. Internal management reviews will also be happening at APRA and ASIC with a likely move towards the imposing of larger penalties and court action for regulatory breaches. This has already been signalled by the new ASIC chair, James Shipton. The need for a royal commission into banking is seen by the public as clearly justified with political pressure mounting, with calls for its extension beyond the current term. In an election year, this may be seen by some as an election winner. Banks will need to demonstrate genuine cultural change focused towards the customer's best interest and protection. Cultural change is always hard to achieve, but we can expect a lot more detailed focus by the regulators on changing the behaviours of all industry participants. Actuaries, no doubt, have a lot to contribute and I hope will take an active role in all of these upcoming challenges. We will continue to arrange and facilitate topical and thought-provoking insight sessions on a wide range of banking-related topics. I'd like to also remind viewers of several useful resources of banking information and continuous professional development resources, including Actries Digital, Institute's newsletter, Actuaries Institute events, APRA website, the Basel website, FINCIA events, Australian Banking Association, the ABA website, public disclosure documents and reports by the major Australian banks, inside newsletter from the major consulting houses, and finally the Royal Commission into Misconduct in the Banking, Superannuation and Financial Services Industry Report. We encourage all members working both in and outside the banking industry to get involved in all aspects of the Institute, either by contributing to and participating in events, presenting and submitting ideas, or researching topics. Your experience and contribution is highly valued. More importantly, the professional, networking and career gains for yourself will be enormous. Similarly, we are keen to assist members who wish to submit banking-related articles for inclusion in Actuaries Digital. We value the input of all members, so if you would like to be involved in any way, please get in touch with us. Finally, thank you to all my fellow Banking Practice Committee members for your efforts during 2018. 
I would also like to thank Jason Slade, our outgoing chairman, who deserves special mention, and thank you for joining us. <laughs>